article discusses the relationship between unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and gravity control. The high-speed maneuvers and rapid acceleration capabilities of these UFOs cannot be achieved by current technology on Earth and the only explanation is gravity control. The article also states that both the government and private industry are conducting a large amount of research and experimentation on gravity control, and many renowned scientists and engineers believe UFOs use artificial gravity fields. Additionally, the article mentions various case studies and scientific principle speculations and inferences as evidence, which are from crew members, pilots, scientists, etc. Editor's note, Major Kehoe has been writing about unidentified flying objects, UFOs, in this magazine and elsewhere for over 15 years. From the outset he has insisted that flying saucers are real and interplanetary, and many authorities have come to agree with him. Now he claims that control over gravity itself is the only explanation for the astounding maneuvers which saucers are said to make. Some physicists dismiss this theory as fundamentally erroneous. But, as you will read, there are others who find Major Kehoe's latest chapter in The Great Flying Saucer Story important and plausible. Control of gravity is something that men have been dreaming about for centuries. Now it appears that we are on the threshold of achieving it. Its value, to the country that first attains it, is incalculable. Our government, hoping for a technical breakthrough, has set up 46 different research projects on various aspects of gravity control. The Air Force is running 33 of these projects and the others are divided among five other agencies. If you add up all the known gravity programs being run by the government and private industry, you get somewhere between 65 and 70 projects. This means there is a heavy concentration of scientific and engineering brains working on the problem. One leading scientist who is convinced that UFOs are spaceships using gravity control is Dr. Hermann Oberth. Dr. Oberth, a recognized authority, was co-designer of the V-2 rocket and later a U.S. special consultant at Huntsville, Alabama, one of the installations where important anti-gravity research is now underway. Today, Dr. Oberth is willing to go further. He is now of the opinion that energy, inertia, and gravitational fields are only aspects of one and the same thing and that it will prove impossible to separate them from each other. What he has in mind, he says, is not yet known fields of force which can be used to accelerate material objects in a way similar to the force of gravity. A top official of Bethlehem Steel, Jesse Via Honeycutt, has indicated some of the results we can expect if loaning is right. Serious research is being concentrated in an attempt to solve the mystery of gravity and bring about a control of its power. It would bring about a greater revolution in power, transportation, and many other fields than the discovery of atomic power, he stated. Anti-gravity? It seems inconceivable. Yet, the search goes on and many responsible men believe the answer will be found. And, to my mind, it is the only possible explanation for the performance of the UFOs. You feel two or three G in a roller coaster or a stunting plane a mere hint of what our astronauts have to endure during blast-off and acceleration. But gravity causes a lot of trouble and expense we seldom think about. Aircraft and rocket builders have to provide heavy engines, huge weight of fuel, just to offset gravity. In one such case, an official AF intelligence report, groups of small UFOs flying at 5,240 miles per hour, were seen and tracked by the crew of an AF B-29. One group, after abruptly slowing to pace the bomber, resumed its speed within seconds. The small UFOs were then seen to merge with or go aboard a huge carrier which accelerated to more than 9,000 miles per hour, before it disappeared. Igo Sikorsky, discussing the colossal force of spatial G, says a steel cable about 8,000 miles thick would be needed to hold the Earth in its orbit if it were not for gravity. On January 25, 1965, Two NASA engineers sighted a UFO which touch landed near Hampton, Virginia. One witness was Major John Nayadley, a retired AF jet pilot. The other was a G. Crimmins, who saw the strange machine maneuvering toward the ground. It was zigzagging as if searching for a landing spot, said Crimmins. I watched it through 20 by 50 binoculars and I could see flashing lights. They appeared to be on the rim of a rapidly rotating disc. Before anyone could reach the spot, the flying disc took off and rapidly climbed out of sight. For several years, Burkhard Heim, director of the German Research Institute of Field Physics at Göttingen, Germany, has been searching for the answer to the gravity riddle. 
Finally, Heim revealed that by direct experimentation he had discovered a positive lead to antigravity. The discovery involved an intermediate field, neither electromagnetic nor gravitational. However, Robert Forward, G expert of Hughes Aircraft Company, uses the Einstein theory to show that it is possible to partially nullify the Earth's gravitational field. The amount of nullification obtainable with present-day technology is extremely small, however. Forward predicts that someday, when our technology is greatly advanced, we will be able to create artificial gravity fields at will. One recent victim was Dempsey Bruton, chief of satellite tracking at NASA's Wallops Island Station in Virginia. On January 5, 1965, Bruton saw a strange round object flying at terrific speed toward the station. After it passed overhead, the UFO shot straight up out of sight. Using the elapsed time, 6 to 9 seconds, and angles and times reported by other witnesses, Bruton said the speed was definitely several thousand miles per hour, possibly 8,000 miles per hour, or even higher. The AF, implying he was incompetent, rejected the report and said it was not evidence of any technically superior machine. But AF policy notwithstanding, the drive to get the secret of anti-gravity is well underway. It can't be stopped now. But it can be speeded up. We are already spending billions on the space program on the race to the moon, to Mars. Harnessing gravity could put us years ahead and save us enormous sums of money. With control of the universe at stake, a crash program is imperative. We produced the A-bomb under the huge Manhattan Project in an amazingly short time. The needs, the urgency today are even greater. The Air Force should end UFO secrecy, give the facts to scientists, the public, to Congress. Once the people realize the truth, they would back even demand a crash G program. The above description is all excerpted from the article, most of the people mentioned can be found in a Google search, however, the authenticity of these descriptions, I did not verify further. The article is overly optimistic about the development of anti-gravity technology, so far, there have been no groundbreaking research papers published in the scientific community. After Einstein's further study of gravity, people have always maintained high expectations for being able to control gravity and apply it. Therefore, the various research projects carried out by government agencies, private companies, and research institutes are possible, but without further verification, it can only be said that they are highly likely. If you like the thoughts this video brings to you, please help us press like, subscribe and turn on the little bell.